Hi there! In this video I'm gonna dwell on why we love to travel and how our brain reacts to it. The reason why I got interested in this topic is because I was studying how our brain reacts to negative uh, stimuli like PTSD or trauma, traumatic experience on my cognitive behavioral therapy course that I'm about to finish very soon. And then I thought how our brain would react to spontaneity and joy of travel, what's happening in it, why some people really love to travel and can't live without it like I do and <laughs> some people don't like it. The minority probably, but still there are some people who are not into travel at all. And meanwhile I'm gonna show you some footage from our Istanbul trip that happened a month ago and my favorite parts of Istanbul on the Asian side. This is Kadikyu area of Istanbul on the Asian side. You can easily get here from the European side by ferry, the ride would take 15 minutes. Well, the European side of Istanbul is packed with touristic attractions, monuments and landmarks and mosques and churches. The Asian side of Istanbul is less busy and uh, there is nothing particular to see probably. There are some attractions of course, but not so many. It's a perfect place for a long-term stay, I think. If I ever come to live in Istanbul for a while, I'd choose accommodation here on the Asian side. One of the most famous neighborhoods in Kadeke district is Moda. Moda is especially famous for its um, big, big park that stretches along the waterfront and there are loads of um, kilometers that you can walk and enjoy the sea view, you can jog, children can play on the playgrounds, people sit on the grass and have their picnics. It's very green and bustling. I love it. Mora is also very famous for its vibrant cafe culture. There are lots of trendy bistros, cafes and restaurants. And there are some interesting boutique shops, art galleries, montage stores. It may seem obvious, people like to travel because they like to see new things, try new food and experience new places. But what happens to our brain when we travel? For example, it experiences novelty and excitement. Traveling to a new country introduces our brain to a range of new experiences and familiar sights, sounds, smells, tastes. And this new stimuli can trigger the release of dopamine, a neurotransmitter that is associated with pleasure and reward. This can lead to feelings of excitement, curiosity and increased attention. Then there is cognitive stimulation. Travel often requires navigating through unfamiliar environments and interacting with people from different cultures like, for example, we interacted with this Iranian girl with a cat who wanted Naomi to stroke it, but Naomi was a bit shy. It happens quite often in Asia, especially when people come to you and speak to you. And it's so easy and you would never do it in your own city, probably. <laughs> so these challenges engage the brain's cognitive processes, like attention, memory, problem solving and learning. The brain becomes more active as it processes and integrates new information and experiences. Also, did you know that interacting with people from different cultures can enhance our brain's ability to understand and empathize with others? Some studies have shown that exploration of diverse cultures can increase our capacity for perspective taking, fostering greater empathy and open-mindedness. This process involves the activation of brain regions associated with social cognition and empathy, such as the prefrontal cortex and the mirror neuron system. Right before we left, we saw a food market and enjoyed some local food and got some nuts and stuff.
our brain is highly adaptable and easily forms new neural connections and modify existing ones. Traveling can evoke a range of emotions, including awe, joy, surprise and sometimes even feelings of stress or homesickness. These emotional responses are mediated by various brain regions and the release of neurotransmitters like serotonin, which plays a role in mood regulation. There is such term as neuroplasticity, which means that our brain can reorganize itself in response to new experiences, and this can contribute greatly to personal growth and learning. For example, when we go to a different country, we often adapt easily to new routines, schedules and cultural norms. Some people don't like to travel. There isn't a universal theory that explains why and, and there isn't a specific neurobiological reason for it, but there is something that explains it a bit. For example, personality traits. Some people with higher levels of neuroticism may experience higher levels of anxiety or stress and discomfort in unfamiliar environments. That's why they don't like to go on errands and travel. Then there's risk perception. The brain's perception of risk and reward can vary among individuals, and some people may have a higher sensitivity to potential risks that is associated with travel. This can be influenced by genetic factors, past experiences, or learned behaviors. Another reason why people don't like to travel is sensory processing sensitivity. Some people may have a higher sensitivity to sensory stimuli, which can make travel experiences a bit overwhelming or exhausting. Their brains may process sensory information more intensely, which leads to discomfort or preference for familiar environments where they can control these stimuli more easily. Of course, of these factors are not a dogma and they are not necessarily mean that someone will dislike or avoid travel altogether if they are more sensitive or more neurotic. Many people with varying personality traits and neurobiological predispositions still enjoy and engage in travel activities. Personal preferences for travel are very complex and can be influenced by lots of psychological, cultural and personal factors in addition to neurobiology. Tell me, what do you think about it? Do you like to travel and if not, why? I'm really highly interested in this topic because travel was a part of my job in the past. I was doing tours in uh, Japan, South Korea and partially in India. Uh, I was planning the trips and taking groups of people on them. And I personally try to travel every time I can. We travel to Istanbul by train from Bulgaria and it arrives to Halkali station, which is pretty far away from the center. You need to take a taxi or go by public transport with um, probably one or two changes, depending on the place you need to arrive to, so it's not very comfortable. Also this train stops at the border and you need to get off the train and uh, let your baggage be checked and your passport of course. However, we did it and it was a nice journey anyway. Thank you for watching this video and let me know what you think in the comments. See you soon. Bye bye.